Uh, so Steve earlier put out the de numbers and granular detail, what moved and the components, etc. Uh, the basic takeaway from all of that is that services inflation, which is much harder to rid uh, of, is high, is stubbornly high, and goods inflation is also ne is, is not seeing any uh, big step down or anything of that sort. There are two implications uh, of uh, you know what we've seen in terms of this uh, U.S. CPI, which is a beaten expectations. One. Uh, what it's done is it's firmly and decisively put an end uh, to the equity relief rally that we were starting to see in the U.S. and the decline in the dollar, which many were anticipating. Uh, so that is one. Second, it's also in a way put to bed uh, some expectations of a soft landing, optimism that you know the economy in the U.S. will just be fine. It will not be too hot, too cold. The Fed will not have to do too much because you know inflation will come under control. And it'll all be back to a Goldilocks kind of kind of scenario. Uh, the inflation number kind of puts to bed that kind of optimism as well. What from here? Remember, the Fed is in a blackout period, so we will not have commentary from Fed officials. Uh, and we've, we've had plenty of that to go around before the Fed went into the blackout. You know, a reportage basically from uh, publications like the Wall Street Journal, uh, which market, markets watch very closely in terms of what, what the Fed's thinking is, what they may do in September, and uh, further plans beyond that as well, I think uh, will be closely watched out for. 75 basis points are still priced in as far as September is concerned, but now you can't rule out 100 as well. Uh, so uh, that's another one. The cumulative market pricing of what the Fed will do, the cumulative uh, pricing for September, November, and December in one single day jumped by 28 basis points. I mean, that is very, very large. And again, market pricing of the Fed funds rate by the end of the year now stands at 4.2%. Remember, the Fed dot plot is still at 3.4 odd percent by the end of, uh, uh, by, uh, for the end of December. That most certainly uh, m will move higher. What this has done, all of the action overnight has done, is that it's also moved uh, market pricing of what other central banks, like the Bank of England, uh, like the Bank of Canada, like the Reserve Bank of Australia, pricing for these central banks also higher. You know, the Fed and what it's doing to control inflation at home in the U.S. is likely to push, uh, put pressure on other central banks around the world, perhaps including the RBI. The Reserve Bank of India, by the way, meets a little later in the month. Uh, Fed meets on the 21st, and then later, to, later a few days after, we get the decision from the Reserve Bank of India as well. So this does arguably put pressure on other central banks as well. The dollar is an important channel through which you know, emerging market flows are impacted, and the dollar saw a very large move. The dollar index rose a percent and a half. It's the single largest one-day move since March of 2020. Let's just have the Nifty up for a quick bit. You know, we've been talking about this ni nice, strong bounce back that we have seen, and it is a very nice, strong bounce back from the day's low, right? And people of mar and market participants have gotten habituated to the fact that you know the market will sell off and irrespective of what the globe is doing the market will be just fine it has been fine i just want to say two things one what we are seeing in india is everyday large chunky 2000 crore kind of inflows uh, that could be a, fu a function of and we've explained this in detail dedicated allocation for india as other emerging markets and benchmarks uh, like the msci emerging market not doing well at all I mean, you know, 75% uh, of the MSCI emerging market constituents have, are having trouble. India is not. I mean, arguably, it's the strongest and the fastest growing economy. So we might be getting chunky inflows. But the second point is, if you were expecting support, it's not that the market here has needed support from global markets to go higher. But the fact is, if you were expecting support from global markets, to continue this rally onwards, I think that kind of disappears after what we've seen as far as inflation numbers last night go. So that's, I mean, you know, my two bits. But let's get the expert in. We have Paul Sh uh, Schult of uh, Schult Research joining us right now uh, to take some questions. Paul, of course, is outspoken and fearless. Paul, great to have you with us here on the program. <laughs> Thanks very much. Uh, Hi, thank you. Uh, it's, it's, it's a pleasure. So uh, what's your reading, Paul, of what we've seen last night as far as the inflation number is concerned. It kind of dashes any hopes that uh, inflation is coming off and it's transitory and there were many waterways of that even now. Go on. Yeah, so the last time I was with you guys, I mentioned that there were a lot of different reasons why inflation is going to be sticky on the way down. You know, China is retreating from the world in, in, in many ways, and this is going to be a, a drag on what was previously quite cheap goods and 
quite cheap labor. And that's happening. And we have, uh, obviously, the Russia-Ukraine situation is still out of hand, and that's also very inflationary. We have a, a labor force in America that's on the war path uh, because they've been, you know, uh, they've been living on, you know, $7 minimum wage for 20 years. And so you have a very aggressive labor pool who is sick and tired of not being able to have a wage that allows them to even live uh, in so many uh, major cities. And of course, you know, don't forget that September is notoriously awful month for equities. Uh, uh, September into the middle of October is notoriously, you know, when we get crashes and, and, and corrections. And so, we, you know, this is bad data at a bad time. I remember, Paul, uh, you, I remember this, you said, you know, we, we tend to get 40, 40 car pileups. I still remember you said the phrase you used towards the end of the year. Uh, yeah, that's right. And so people have come back from their vacation. They're looking at the markets. They're they're digesting everything for you know what's coming up in uh, in in the next year. And they're starting to say, okay, this is just not going to be as good as we thought. And so we need out of this. And and I think that's just like the same old pattern over and over and over again as people return from vacation. And this is what we see happening right now. That, like you said, I think you put it really well in your in your intro. We're just not going to have sort of the Goldilocks, um, you know, scenario. But I, I don't think 100 basis points is realistic. I think it's going to be between 50 and 75 coming up next week. The problem is that, that central banks in emerging markets are not going to be as fast. And so guess what they're going to do? They're going to let a lot of the pressure come out of the currency. So I think we're going to see weakness in the uh, Indian currency. I think we're going to see weakness in Southeast Asia. Uh, you know, South America. Um, and so I think we're going to see a, a continuously strong dollar. Mm. Uh, okay, uh, two, two things. One, uh, do, one is uh, with regards to what happens in the U.S. Do, do, uh, does the dollar go significantly higher, if you have a view on the dollar, because that's an important channel uh, through which uh, flows and uh, risk, uh, sort of risk on or risk off happens in emerging markets. So the dollar, your view on that. Uh, and, uh, and second, I mean, I don't know if you have a view on India specifically, Paul, because it's, uh, you were talking about the currency here, right? We've, ha we've had a yeah. very strong currency. You know, uh, the, uh, you know the, the central bank here is using dollars to protect a level, I mean, you know, 80 to a dollar. But while uh, it's, it's perhaps the best performing emerging market currency year to date, uh, the Indian rupee, uh, the stock market here is just 2 or 3% away from, uh, from an all-time high. Uh, so, so, you know, Okay, uh, first, will the dollar go significantly higher? And if it does go significantly higher, if that is your view, can uh, EMs, even better performing ones like India, escape that? Your thoughts? So, yeah, so, so for the currency, I, I think that it, it, you, unless you are planning, unless your central bank is planning on being more aggressive than the Fed, which I doubt it for almost any emerging market, the, the chances are having a... Uh, 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 a currency which is going to be weaker rather than stronger. Uh, I agree with you. India is a, a very good proxy uh, and an alternative to China, where the news and the the, the China bashing is, is just getting worse and worse. You know, by the week. Uh, you know, and China uh, is is itself retreating and is being chased out of you know, um, much of the international monetary system by a, a very aggressive, um, you know, uh, uh, policy by the U.S. And so uh, on the equity side, uh, this explains a lot of it is, is you know. It... Okay. Uh, uh, Brazil is. A all right. I think uh, we are having some difficulty with that line with uh, Paul. We'll I just. Uh wait at least a you know half a minute <laughs> okay i think paul's link is back paul go on sorry we lost you there but go on uh we were at you were at, oh, uh, yeah. yeah yeah sorry i was going to say that that the the that india is uh you know uh, again you, you look at the BRICS, right south africa is a sort of a disaster in uh, russia is a catastrophe with this defeat last weekend uh brazil is is a disaster with a very uncertain election outcome and uh, China is increasingly being chased away from international markets and is itself retreating. So India is, is 
a, you know, a decent option here in terms of what used to be called BRICS. Mm. So it's a peculiar position then, right? Uh, the uh, global macros will remain very tough, uh, but if you are investing in a market like, uh, like India, actually not a market like India, but India, because there is only one India, uh, as you described it as well, within the emerging market block, uh, it, it could be very different. I mean, it doesn't have to pan out like it has historically, which is that, you know, dollars strengthening uh, tremendously and uh, U.S. equities down sharply meant this meant much of the same here in India as well. It could be very different this time in that sense. Well, India has been smart. The, the, the RBI is letting the currency take a lot of the hit on inflation rather than, you know, aggressively raising interest rates. Um, you know, Indonesia is doing a, a, a similar thing. Um, but in terms of the other uh, BRICS, you know, the, the policy and the responsible behavior of governments and central banks is, is pretty appalling in, 